Good evening, everybody. It's main talk, not Monday, but it's main talk what? Wednesday, a special <laughs> edition of main talk. Not your average conversation about hair. Well, good evening uh, to my co-host, Kai Ianta. How you doing? Good evening. I'm doing good. Listen, we looking good in our pink, huh? Oh, yeah, in our watered down red, we look good. In our, <laughs> our watered water down red. No <laughs> what? Pun intended. But the truth of the matter is you can't get red, but you can't get, what it is it? You can't get pink without red right it was, right. It was hard pressed you know what i am finding this shirt okay i i think i got rid of almost everything like what <laughs> listen i had to pull an old throwback sweater like i got an old pink sweater this is like the only thing that i have that i could kind of you know you know could kind of do so this is exactly what i did you know what i'm saying i like your hair let me oh, just thank you. the thank color you. and the style let me just make mention listen i had to try to do something i had to try to do something 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 with this hair so it's like i'm gonna let it grow it out am i gonna cut it first it was gray you know it's main talk it was gray then you know i was gonna let it go gray but then now i need to you know color it because i had time to be gray and then now it's like it's growing out so now do i want to cut it or do i not want to cut it so midlife crisis that's better not to cut that is that t is the question changes i would sing the song but we don't air so you know right right but it's but you know what it's it is uh breast cancer awareness month mm -hmm. and we wanted to do this special edition to really talk about breast cancer and uh and to pay homage or to i don't want to use the word pay homage but to what to you know i said we wanted to make sure you know as the month is as it is to bring awareness to everyone um this month is to make sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing um i think i put out a post to say breast cancer is not in quarantine so we want to talk about it keep it on the forefront of your minds and make sure you're doing everything you should be doing every month but more so the awareness um comes this month exactly exactly so Here's some studies. Now, you, you're the breast cancer queen, but tonight, guys, we're going to be bringing her on in just a minute. As we know that this show is only 30 minutes, but we're going to be bringing on a, uh, a professional in the medical field who knows all about breast cancer. Uh, she spent over 30 years in the field of breast cancer uh, in, in oncology as a nurse working with women who have breast cancer. And, and now she is a nurse educator who works for a pharmaceutical company that actually trains uh, on certain, uh, what do you call it, on certain pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. educator. But I, she could talk, she'll tell you better than, than me. But I did want to give some interesting facts. So Miss Ianta, you know, according to a study uh, of the U.S. Breast Cancer st Statistics on breastcancer.org, about one in eight women, and that's about 12%, will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. In 2020, an estimate of 276, 480 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women in the US along with 48,500 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. These are some big numbers. Now I know that you have studied this, this is what you do, what are your thoughts on this before we bring in our professional, those numbers? Uh, I, you know, for, for, for me, um, because I'm the soul of, of public health, I focus in on more of the African-American women um, with those numbers. So those numbers are, of course, uh, uh, encompass all women. So mm -hmm. for me, my focus is mainly, mainly on the African-American women, which we, we get breast cancer at a um, lesser rate, but we die at a higher rate. So right. that's why that's more of my concern you know, if us is that, what, what are we going to do and how are we going to deal with uh, breast cancer and, and um, things, all things that are related to the breast? Right, right. Well, that's one of the things that our guest is going to talk about because that was her concern as well. She wanted to talk about the disparities 
-hmm. in the African American community. And since we only have 30 minutes, you think it's a good time to go ahead and bring her I on? I think it's a good time to bring her on. Well, let's go ahead on and let's bring in our guests for the evening. And everybody, why don't you please welcome our classmate, both of our classmates from Tuskegee, Miss <laughs> Nurse Bernie, Nurse Beezy, Bernie, I call her Beezy. Uh, welcome to Main Talk. Thank you so much, T.U. You, you knew? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's how you come in, kid. That's how you come in. <laughs> Well, Kim, we, we were talking about, um, uh, well, Ianta was really focusing on, we had given the, the, the studies, the statistics, and mm -hmm. uh, but that statistic covers everybody. And right. one of the things that, you know, Ianta was talking about was that the disparities really, and even with her focus, and I'll let her go into, as it relates to breast cancer in the African-American community. So I'm gonna really let Ianta go in with this conversation, but I- No, really, we're gonna let Kim go in with the conversation. Right, she, right, but, but, one of the things I, but, no, but one of the things I wanted to start with before she goes in and talk about that, you know, this is Main Talk. And over the years with me being a licensed cosmetologist serving women in the salon, we have, I've, I've had several clients who have had um, breast cancer, right? And one of the things that they tend to ask their doctor is like, what treatment can I get that will save my hair? Because right. losing your hair right. is a major side effect of breast cancer. And so if I was to retitle this, it would be, am I choosing my hair over my breast? And I know that seems kind of crazy, but we all know people that that is a main concern. And they will ask their doctor, well, can I try this first? Cause I don't want to lose my hair. So I want to start off there. What do you feel as it relates to women and their hair? Because we know our hair is our crown and glory. Why do we feel, you know, why is that a big, big concern with women that you think? I think you have to look at the diagnosis that we're talking about. So there are, their womanhood is already being hit by the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so a lot, especially, you know, before now, everybody, the natural hair is this or that. We wanted long hair. It was a definer, quote unquote, for us. And so when you already had telling me I have a disease and that would, the other thing that makes me a woman, my breasts, now you're telling me in order to live, I got to take something that's going to take my hair away from me. Hmm. That's huge for people. And we have underestimated the emotional toll that that takes on women, especially when they feel that they're men or significant others in their lives will not see them the same. Mm -hmm. So that is why I, I heard it over and over and over and over during my career. Wow, I mean, that's big. I never thought about it that from a woman's standpoint, you're removing my breasts. So the one yes. thing that I identify with as a woman that differentiates me from a man is my yes. breasts. And so now I won't have any breasts or hair. So we're trying to right. hold on to some type of feminine Exactly. You know, femininity, you know, I exactly. never, ever thought about it, you know, in that yes. kind of way. Yes, because really it, it masculinizes the woman because not only, especially depending on the age, the hair could be gone, the breasts can be gone, and then the, the reproductive function is either gone or delayed. So everything that makes a woman a woman can be at risk when you're treating breast cancer. And so... And so, and, and as you say that, it, it sounds horrific, right? And so yes. you're in this field, what advice do you give women when that, when that comes to play that uh, I'm, I'm losing my hair, I'm losing my breasts, I have to lose my hair and, and, and maybe like you said, delay, delayed uh, childbearing things. And yes. What advice do you give women knowing that um, in, in some cases, not all cases, it can be life or death, right? What yes. advice do you give the women? I usually start out with making sure they understand that in most cases, the loss of the hair is temporary. It is temporary. There are some where the, what, what y'all in the hair world call alopecia, Deshaun. Right. Um, it's very, I make sure they understand that. And I make sure they know that this treatment is the best for what you have. Mm -hmm. So basically it's like this. If I see a bear across the street, am I going to try to shoot him with a shotgun or am I going to try to shoot him with a BB gun? 
Mm. Now, the BB gun may slow him down or whatever, but that shotgun can take him out. And so when you're looking at chemotherapy options, the heavy hitters have the most side effects. Mm -hmm. And that hair loss goes there. And because Deshaun and I have had experience with someone who did not want her hair to come out. And so she chose the next therapy, no matter how much I talked to her. Right. She chose because she was that attached to her hair. And so, and so Kim, as you talk about hair and, and um, what may happen, let's back up okay. and talk about what gets us to this point. Let's talk about some preventive measures, right? To okay. make sure that women are doing things to uh, preventive measures that they can, may not even have to go that far, right? To, right. to not lose their hair. So let's right. back up and kind of educate our women or, or tell them the things that, tell them the, um, um, what, are, what are the numbers, right? Yes. Um, disparities and yes. what we should be doing as African-American women to make sure that we are staying uh, ahead of the game, if you will, when it right. comes to uh, pre-diagnosis and those things of breast. Right, right. So just a broad statistic, 268, thousand new cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed okay um and the issue that though is that you have all these diagnoses women period but then when you get down to us as african-american women the differences in the numbers are staggering and enlightening and mind-boggling all of these different things so let's talk about the incidence of breast cancer Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is estimated that 130 white women of 100,000 will get breast cancer. In black women, about 126,000 of a, 126 of 100,000 will get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the death, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's where African American women die more from breast cancer, even though white women get it more, pre more prevalent. More prevalent. Yep, so absolutely. that number is, is really, really staggering. And then if you look at younger women being diagnosed, it is way more prevalent for black women to get breast cancer let it, uh, under 40 years of age than any other demographic group. Mm -hmm. And the thing about younger people that get it, it's more aggressive. It tends to be what we call triple negative which is much more difficult to treat. And therefore, here we are again. Why do we get these health issues and things uh, and, at a more prevalent and at a deadly rate than others? Mm -hmm. And so now I'm glad to see so much research being done because they finally figured out you can have three women line up with breast cancer and all three can have something, a different type, different hormonal statuses and all of that and a different treatment plan. And so now you have a lot of studies just looking at black women in breast cancer. Mm -hmm. A lot of them because the disparities are sobering. Mm -hmm. So what can we do? That was the other part. Mm -hmm. So the thing about breast cancer is that it's really not a cause mm -hmm. unless you look at genetics. Mm -hmm. If you look at genetics and when we start talking about the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, some of you may have heard of that. Those are genetic predispositions. And if you turn out to have these genetic predispositions, it's like a 90 something percent chance that you will get it. it and breast, ovarian, and all they all are in that same BRCA thing, okay? So other than that, we don't know what caused breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I've had women who weigh 250, five feet tall, which are considered obese get it because you know obesity is a risk factor for everything. Mm -hmm. I've had women who were totally vegetarian, worked out five days a week, get breast cancer. I've seen 22-year-old women with breast cancer. I've seen 92-year-old women with breast cancer. And mm -hmm. so the thing is this, finding it as early as possible is the key. Mm -hmm. Finding it as early as possible is the key. Mm -hmm. And what age should women start to, and, and you mentioned this earlier age, what age yeah. should women start getting mammograms? And also what age should women start checking their own breast? So two things. And that, okay. and that second question, what age should they start checking their own breast is extremely important, right? Because you yeah. have to know what your breasts look like, what they feel like to notice change, right? 
So at what age should they start doing that? And, and what age should they start getting their mammograms? Okay, and can I add in and can I add into that since we're talking about the disparities with African American, we know that it's kind of like colonoscopy, colonoscopies. They say go get it at this age, but it, as it relates to the African American community, you know, they're trying to pull back the age. So to add on to what you know Ianta is saying, should African Americans, based on the information that you give, should African Americans start getting, you know, mammograms at an earlier age than you know, white women, Asian, Hispanic, you know, et cetera. Okay. So the, the, the experts say that women can start asking for mammograms between 40 and 44. At 45, you, they should be getting them annually. Now, if you have a history of breast cancer in your family, then I think in your 30s, you should start. This is just me yeah. talking from what I have seen over 32 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Also, um, if you have a uh, first degree relative like your mom or your aunt, your sister, then you should be getting them earlier. And if you, and, and I, I've been getting them for many years because I have two maternal aunts who have had breast cancer, okay? So I was in my thirties getting them annually mm -hmm. because that is considered, a, put me at high risk for developing breast cancer, okay? Let me ask so, you a question, would your insurance cover that though at that age? It, that's what I was about to say, because I was considered high risk. So your physician has to put on there high risk because blank, blank, blank. So if, if they get the documentation, then they do it. But they can't, they just can't say she's scared she's gonna get breast cancer, so she need it. No, <laughs> they, need <to> say, <laughs> they need to say her mom's oldest sister diagnosed at this age, da 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 da. da. Her mom's next oldest sister, which is what they put on mine, da, 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 had it. So she is at high risk and also dense breasts, which is what I had, mm -hmm. huge. That's another uh, risk factor because it's, it's harder to feel when they're dense. Right, right, dense. right. Okay, and and, and so which study show the African-American women have more dense breasts than yes. uh, most other women. Yeah, yes, we got we it all, but we are the all, so. Yes, we are all in us. <laughs> We're every woman, it's all in us. Yeah, that's, it's, right. It's, that's, that's right, that's right. In terms of self breast exam, I started really at 16. Mm -hmm. For one thing, my breast my breast grew so big so fast that I was like, okay. But then I can remember hearing, check your breast. I didn't even know how to do it at that time, but I felt mm -hmm. a lump. So mm -hmm. I had my first mammogram at 16 because I felt a lump and I could put my hand on it even to this day because it's still there. It did some changes. Anytime I felt it change, I went and had it checked. I even had a needle uh, aspiration to pull out some of them cells and tell me if it's just still a cyst or is it go getting to be something else now. So mm -hmm. I say that when a young lady starts to have her menstrual cycle, mm -hmm. she needs to start examining her breasts because they change. You know, they get bigger and they get sore. Mm -hmm. All of these things right before your cycle. So right after the cycle goes off, start they should start doing that breast exam because most of them are going to be found that way. Mm -hmm. Most That's of them. Right. And making sure that you know if you're examining your breast, go under your arms mm -hmm. mm. and above your collarbone. Mm -hmm. Those are frequent places. Sometimes it don't show up in the breast. Mm -hmm. It'll show up in the lymph node under the arm or mm -hmm. up above your clavicle. And then when they biopsy it, guess what they see? Breast cancer. That's right. And you know, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that you said that about those other areas because oftentimes, and I mean, I don't understand this, but women, women just have to be in touch and in tune with their bodies and how they look and how they, you know how, like, like they're all with their faces. It's like, oh, I yeah. have a pimple, right? You see that because you look at your face every day, but you're going to have to get used to getting out of that shower or getting in that shower, looking in the mirror, looking at your body, all parts of your body to notice. Yeah. So you'll be able to notice any type of change that occurs Absolutely. with your body. Absolutely. So when you say above the clavicle and under, you know, under the arm and um, that's, that's very important because yeah. women are not being in tune with their that's bodies right. enough to notice change, right? I remember right. I had a breakout and the doctor said, 
well, when did you notice this breakout? I mean, well, I'm analytical, so I really don't count. And so it was like, oh, well, the other day I was looking, it was nothing there. So it had to come the day before, right? So, but what I'm saying is that if I wasn't in tune, right, and paid attention right. to my body, I wouldn't have known when the breakout started. So you have to be able to tell that the doctor does not live with you. They only go on by things that you told them. So you have to be able to help the doctor, right? Absolutely. By saying, I noticed this on this day. Like you yes. say, most, most oftentimes things are found by you um, yes. touching your breast and just yes. having a relationship. When we talk about how on, on here, main talk, having a relationship with your hair, have a relationship yes. with your body, have a relationship with your, with your breast and know yes. what they feel like and know what they look like, you know? Exactly. That's very That's important. That, that was a very good point that you made, um, Kim. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, what, but what would you find if you, if you, if you, you know, I've never heard of that before. So this is the first okay. time that I, that I heard that. And, you know, I've been a bad girl. I don't necessarily check my breasts as often, you know, as I should, although I'm really, I'm in touch with the girls. I'm, I'm in touch with what's going on with them. You know, I am. I'm. I'm in touch because they Ooh, bigger than they good. ever have been before. You know, like well, I, you need to start touching them at least once a month around the same time too. Well, you so, know, but the reason the reason why I said that is because the the person that we know, Kim, yeah. that we talked about earlier, remember right. one of the signs that she had were her breasts is that her breast was leaking mm -hmm. fluid, and she went to her doctor and remember her doctor said that she was just probably being it was a sexual thing, right? Mm -hmm. So. And she just took that. So, you know, what can be, what should be the, you know, with, with black women, especially, we don't self-care, right? We, we're bad with that. We, we're going to make sure we get our hair done. We're going to wear our lashes. We're going to take care of our kids. But when it comes to us, we will allow something like what she said, leaky breasts. And after all of that, then, you know, it was her hair, you know, all of that. And then now with the insurance disparities that we have with women. That's also an issue. Yes. It's also an issue. But the question that I have is for women, especially for women who um, are, they don't have insurance. Um, uh, they don't, they don't really check their breasts at what stage, you know, I, I, I would hope that it wouldn't get into the point of leaky, you know, like leaky breasts and things like that. But really at what point should we just stop and say, A, um, I need to at least go, you know, check this out because we're not even getting annual physicals because we don't have exactly. insurance. Exactly. So the first thing, let me just give you a hint about what you're feeling. When you feel right above your clavicle, right above, above your, um, right above uh -huh. the bone, there mm -hmm. are left nodes that run along there. Mm -hmm. If you feel something unusual and it feels like the tip of your nose, then it's probably not malignant. But if it feels like your knuckle, it probably is. Oh, that's See, this, good. The knuckle is hard and, uh, and it does not move. The nose is softer and you can move it. So that's a clue that, okay. Secondly, if it ain't none of that and it just ain't right and it's bothering you, go to somebody until they satisfy you with your diagnosis. Because how many women have I seen in later stages? Because when they went with the lump, the doctor told him, you ain't but 25. You don't have no breast cancer. We're just going to watch this for six months. Then when they come back, it's all under the arm. Okay, so you, I, you know, I'm always, I've always told my patients that I've been a proponent of pushing it until I get what I need when it's dealing with my health. And a lot of times now, especially now, it seems like more now, I have been dealing with a lot of people with health issues that are not, the doctors are just poo-pooing stuff away and then I'm getting involved in asking questions and then another step is taken. Does every step lead to something malignant? No, mm -hmm. but what do you need for peace of mind? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you, and so, you know your body and it's just like um, she said, uh, Ayanta, I have to uh, remember to call her that, said before, you gotta be in touch and something ain't right on the inside if something ain't right here and you and the doctors are just, just not wanting to do what you need to do so you need to push whatever it is so kim you know you said you need to push like whatever whatever it is but you know the layman people that you know you have you have knowledge right you That's have right. you have education you have the knowledge but the layman person doesn't know what the push is and they look for the doctor to be the uh the professional in that area yeah. and yeah. if they said this like you said the lady who who breasts were leaking and she went to the doctor and the doctor said oh it's one thing and she said okay right 
how do how how does a layman person know right to mm -hmm. say if they go to a doctor the doctor said uh well this is nothing you're 25 it's nothing how do they know to say hey uh i don't know i'm not comfortable with that answer like why would they why would they go to another doctor if if the doctor told them like yeah this is what this is like oh okay i went to the doctor and said well, it's, it's nothing right how does right. a layman person know to say let me go until I'm I'm satisfied because why wouldn't that satisfy them? And this it is for would, our audience who is wanting to know these questions. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. It would because we want it to be nothing. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the numbers and you look at these things, and that is why having these kind of discussions is huge because it will prompt somebody to take another step, not to just uh, fall on what one doctor tells them if they are not satisfied with that that and the doctor has not done what biopsied it done some kind of x-ray or some type of scan they mm -hmm. cannot look at it and tell what's going on and so mm -hmm. if you are not getting at least if you go with a lump in your breast mm -hmm. they need to have some kind of scan or biopsy set up mm -hmm. that's just the truth because mm -hmm. until you put a needle in it and pull some cells out and look that's you why you know. i know monica kaufman mm -hmm. right okay caught real early her it was like called ductal carcinoma in situ mm -hmm. meaning that it was right at that pre uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. because why mm -hmm. they biopsied it they put a needle in there mm -hmm. it wasn't really nothing to feel they saw a few calcifications on her mammogram mm -hmm. and so that's what i'm saying anything especially if depending on your heritage your ancestry your history and the fact that this was not here a month ago and now it is, I need you to check me out. So, you know, so okay, so I like that. So, could you get specific things? If yeah. they go to the doctor, the doctor should not just look at them and say, oh, you you 25 or you under 25 exactly. or you even under 40 or whatever age. Yep. They shouldn't just yep. look at them and accept yep. they say you're fine. They need yep. to get get a mammogram, get an x-ray, get a biopsy or get something yes. to show yes. me, to prove. Exactly. That is so exactly. that's 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 exactly what I wanted you to tell them. Like, how do yeah. they know that? Like, I'm not satisfied. Give yep. me some. Basically, you're saying give evidence exactly. of this is nothing. Give me some exactly. evidence, not just your opinion. Oh, exactly. this is nothing. Give me some evidence, right. and the only way you can get the evidence is from doing those procedures yeah. um, to get the evidence. The only way to definitively diagnose it because you can have a lump in your breast mm -hmm. and it not be breast cancer. It can mm -hmm. be right. the or other uh -huh. kinds of cancer uh -huh. that manifest there. Uh -huh. You have to get a piece of that thing and have it looked at under the microscope to know what it is. And you know, we talk about people living longer. Uh -huh. People are living longer, but they're getting diagnosed with these cancers and these malignancies younger. Uh -huh. I see it even in a different type of cancer that I talk about now. But uh -huh. it's, we, can, we have to be knowledgeable. Uh -huh. We have we to be knowledgeable. We have a question somebody said on the comments and say a lot of doctors do want to watch before taking a major step in doing biopsy. And, and, that, and that's crazy because I, what, uh, piggybacking on what uh, Diane said, you know, when every time I go to the doctor every year and I know I enter you and I have had this conversation, you know, how important is calcification? Because every year when I go, they do, they, they always call me back, you know, and so then you just get all flustered. And so now every year I just do what they call the 3D mammogram. They put the little, uh, you know, whatever. Now I lay my breast down on the table and lay down and it goes around. How important is that for like a next step? Because no, literally, because I've had this calcification for a while, but in the beginning, before they started offering the 3D, it was just, you know, stressed out. I know I had to say she hate to get her mammogram around her birthday because she just Want her I birthday. pushed it back because they're not gonna stress me out. Okay, I right. pushed it back. We in March now. We good. I'm like, yeah, because y'all not gonna. And I go in there saying, y'all not. My birthday is next week. Like, come, come on now. Right. No, but but then sometimes yeah. they say, okay, well, hell, get out. But like, I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. You, you know, you know, you know. Uh, to what the shine is saying, um, and and, and what the the, the uh, person asked the question about, um, um, you know, the doctor say just watch it, but they've gone through the step of having the mammogram, right? And they and they have a baseline that they're measuring against to say, let's just watch it, right? They're not just saying let's just watch it for your first warrant, right? They have a baseline, right? Go ahead, go go, go ahead, Kim. You're the expert. You talk about it. no, you 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 
right on it. You have to look at the situation. So mm -hmm. classifications can definitely indicate something. But like in Deshaun's case, the classifications have been there. They they didn't need to do anything. They're doing that next step with that 3D mammogram or an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. They always, I always have to get a mammogram and an ultrasound of both of my breasts every time I go because I'm at high risk and then it's dense and they want to make sure they see. So a regular mammogram and then somebody just saying, well, you got something here, but I don't know. Then send me to a breast specialist mm -hmm. who knows how to look at this film and tell the difference between what's benign and what's malignant. So go another step. That's mm -hmm. all we're asking. Mm -hmm. My life is at stake. Is mm -hmm. it going to hurt you to refer me to this breast specialist across town? That's right. No. That's right. You have to be your own advocate in your, mm -hmm. your own life to take control. The doctor is there to assist you in what you have going on, but you have to be your own advocate and you Absolutely. have to, and you have to insist on, like you said, going to the next step. Do you have so, to. So we're, we're coming down to the wire. Kim, thank you so very much for coming in and joining us in this conversation. Yeah, Kim, really, really good, Kim. I'm glad you here on the show to talk about this. You know, people are in the comments saying it's very informative information. You know, yes. uh, you know, we really need to take time for more self-care. Can you end by giving just a, you know, just just a, a main tip that women can take? We are in breast cancer awareness. We do see that, you know, people are survivors, you know, uh, and have survived over 30 years, like my right. teacher, Miss Bennett. Shout out to Miss Bennett, you know, out there who posted 30 years survivor. Yes. As far as recent to, you know, one of my Saras who just, you know, beat uh, breast cancer and ring the bell, you know, Sara Sewell, you know, what can we as a community do to make sure I know Ianta has a um, Black Pink. She has an organization, Black Pink, and I'll let her go on and say something about that. But what can we do as women? What is our first line of defense? What should we do if we don't have insurance? I don't know if you have any, inf any information. Where can we call? Where can we go? How can we get this eradicated for, for once and for all? The first thing is know your body. Don't That's let right. anybody tell you that your body is not doing this or that or this because I always told my patients, let me know what you're going through. You know you better than me. And then let me figure out in the context of what we have going on, what the best course of action is. If you don't have insurance, contact the American Cancer Society. They have all kinds of resources, including provide rides, helping people with rides. They have people that deal with helping you get insurance and all of these, uh, helping you get funding to pay for things. And there, and I'm not sure it's still there because I'm not in the clinic anymore, but there was a Medicaid just for breast cancer. Did y'all mm. know that? Mm -hmm. mm. No. It's silly. It's silly. It's silly. You know how I found out? Mm -hmm. Somebody came to this country and mm -hmm. got it. Mm -hmm. And then I started telling all my other patients, check into this breast cancer Medicaid, yeah. Medicaid for breast cancer. It covers treatment, all of these different things. Mm -hmm. So Most the first- the they do. Oh, okay. See, I didn't mm -hmm. even know that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, knowing your body is the best thing and being informed. Don't run from information. Mm -hmm. Find out if it's something wrong. Don't just poo-poo it under the rug and think it's yeah. going to go. Right. That's a, right. another thing to do. If it don't hurt, or if it ain't affecting our activity of daily living, we especially men do that way more than women, but enough of us do it too. Because why? Women, we are in power positions now. We are running things, we handling business, and we don't have time. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody right. got time. Mm -hmm. But right. avoidance, like you said, avoidance does not resolve, right? And not, it's, not. it's just, if you sweep it on the rug, it's still going to be there. Um, and also, um, I started Black Pink because I did breast cancer research, but in, and that's my passion. Even though I, we now do a whole lot of other things, but it was it's for the the power of Black and the softness of pink, my my, my uh, nonprofit. Yeah. But we help women get mammograms and mammograms readings. Last year we helped twenty five women get mammograms and mammogram readings, and of that twenty five, five had breast cancer, right? Mm -hmm. And so. So, so if we if we didn't do that, they wouldn't have known. But 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 we also refer right. out to the Susan B. Coleman does free. So so there are a lot of resources out there. Um, yes. You can contact Black Pink. We'll direct you to where we need to have to you to go. We don't have the funding, but 
there are resources out there. This, this, this main talk conversation is not to frighten you, not to have you, have you be fearful. It is to inform you, empower you so that you'll be able to make the decisions that you need to make. So if you're feeling afraid right now, it's because you're not doing what you wasn't supposed to be doing, right? You're not checking your breasts. You're not getting your mammograms. You're sweeping things under the rug, right? Stop it right? We want to live a long time and we want to be healthy and we want to catch things early. The earlier we catch things, the better it is for treatment. So get your mammograms and, and check your breast and check your body and know yourself. So uh, yeah. I answer, can you tell people how to reach you? Um, and, and sidebar, uh, mm -hmm. Kim, your mama said, uh, great job, Kim Willing, uh, Bernie. That's <laughs> Willing, Bernie. <laughs> Say your whole name job. right but, thanks but we're, about end, we're about to end right thank exactly you, uh, uh, yes right thank you thank you you know my hand clap well, I gotta, and this was great clap. kim this is right down my alley i absolutely love this right well, I would, what'd you say kim i would love to get with you on your black pink because oh, absolutely for these people that get the diagnosis and are going to treatment you know, maybe just having somebody that's been on that the, the front lines of treatment can offer yes. some. I would love to, to to partner with you some kind of way. On no, that. absolutely. No, thank you so much. Absolutely. And so, look, so, and I'll be calling you. Okay. Right, see you. I tell, them, tell them. I have to tell them how they can get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. or, or you can also go into the copy of the post and we can, you know, put it in there as well. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure I put that in there. But go ahead and tell them how they can reach out to yeah, you. Um, I'm, I'm on Blackpink um, org on um, Facebook and on Instagram. And all of our information is actually on there. And my website is blackpink.org and the phone number and emails are on there. How you can get in contact with me if you need um, some assistance and all things that you're doing. So um, get those mammograms though. You got to get them. All right. And, and remember, early detection is the key, everybody. Normally we end our main talk. I, I don't know why I feel like I'm getting emotional. Maybe because of my mother, but... Oh! But when I look in the mirror Tonight I wanted to I end with a girl, lock heart Hey, someone, why not me? So if a lot of you guys that may be going through breast cancer right now Just know you're strong heart. enough to fight it You'll get and through it And uh, God is the seed and the master of all You may want to know me. why not me I But I hear God saying why it. not you You're you strong enough to do it So instead of ending with the rap of main talk I thought I would end with Tasha Page Lockhart why not me? You guys be so strong. Friends, we have awareness month. And you can I'm fight it. You can beat it. Thank you, Kim, for joining us. And I welcome. Thank you, Kim, for being here with me. Y'all go and watch the debate. My emotions are coming out. We got to vote. We got to vote. Thank y'all. Here's a hug for you, Shani. Thank you. Bye-bye, y'all. All right, goodbye.